Upper Peninsula, Michigan is, uh, you know, it's a little bit on the fringes. A lot of, you know, rocky granite outcrops and spectacular terrain. Great for all kinds of sports, but definitely makes it great for snow biking. Marquette, Michigan is a, is a really interesting town and, and somewhat of an oddity for this far north in, in the, the Midwest. We have, you know, the brew pubs, very unique restaurants. It, it's kind of surprising, I think, for other people when they come from out of the area that we can have the unique aspects that we do this far north in the middle of a town that can get annually 200 inches and at times 350 inches of snow. I'm Mike Burdett, I'm a board member with the No Cayman on Trail Network, the NTN here in Marquette, Michigan. Uh, we build and maintain um, and develop about 65 miles of trails. You know, in the last four or five years, started to develop the snow bike route. We've got plenty of cold air in Michigan and Upper Michigan. The weather plays an important role in UP Sports. TV6's Mike Ludlam tells us how a couple of bicycle motocross racers put the winter months to good use. Literally, I was like 10 years old with a BMX bike with a snowplow on it. It's really cold. So part of the whole evolution, at least in the, in the Marquette area, is people riding snowbanks in the wintertime to kind of, you know, stay in shape and have a good time. We got them working for us. It's been going on forever, you know, since probably the late 70s, as, as far as I can tell. Um, in my life, in my world, probably through the mid-80s trying to become a better BMX racer, it kind of evolved into packing down like a pump track. <laughs> Area teens bike year-round and live for the challenges that winter brings. We work on it probably maybe six hours a day, starting at nine o'clock when it's cold enough to start watering and shaping everything out. This is a Pro Class BMX bike. I just modified it by putting some studs in the tires to make it ride on the ice a little better. Even though they say they're bad boys, they're actually a gang of benevolent bikers. They say they stay out of trouble by keeping busy on their BMXs. Then it evolved, you know, into this free ride thing where we were packing down with snowshoes stuff off of Sugarloaf Mountain or Hogsback or whatever we could find. You know, going off hawks and jumps and that sort of thing on big downhill bikes, which had a little bit bigger tire, but not like where we are now. And then it's evolved into these big fat tire bikes. You know, thankfully somebody came out and and made it a giant tire, which is ultimately what makes it makes it happen. And while the weather's been pretty nice around here lately for outdoor BMX biking. Make a face into the camera. Ready to ride. How would I film for a while? Those are pretty good gloves. Riding snow, it's a little bit like mountain biking, but it's a little bit like skiing, not totally like anything else. Um, Evan Simula, general manager at the sports rack in Marquette. You're already in such a different place when you're out riding groomed snow trail and stuff like that. The shore ice is even more like you're riding on Mars or a different planet almost. I guess the big thing is getting out and it feels like you're in the middle of nowhere by yourself. Kind of hard to explain. Got to get out and try it.
so we had, you know, we have the shore ice riding, we've got, you know, riding on all the hiking trails around here that, that people are snowshoeing. But on top of that, we needed to have a snow bike route, which is a standalone effort to make snow biking happen instantly. Long ago, before the left and right stereo, there was a princess and a dragon and well, the princess had no idea the dragon was a dragon, but all the while they were pen pals. Um, they, well, the princess didn't know the dragon was a dragon because the dragon had really good penmanship. So written on a scroll, a little torn around the edges with India ink, here we go. So Marquette having a lot of snow and a really great outdoor culture, you know, it just made a lot of sense to kind of have one of these bikes and a lot of other people were even feeling the same way and they started to really sell. It kind of dawned on us that we needed to have a thing to pull behind something to make these bikes work on snow. And actually early on it wasn't even a chunk of metal, it was a, a roller that you'd roll your yard with. Filled it with the beet juice, apparently beet juice doesn't freeze. Um, but it also doesn't prevent somebody from stealing it from the trailhead. So that groomer was gone. And then we kind of designed and, and welded up, shaped out, cut off, added to, welded on more. You know, kind of a, a homemade groomer. The goal was to get a groomer that could, more or less in one pass, make snow biking happen. Here we go. The groomer mimics a snowmobile trail groomer slash cross-country ski trail drag. Um, so kind of a box construction, some cutters. The cutters are kind of low in the snow, so the snow kind of rolls over that multiple times. So it takes the crystal and makes it a little bit brown and it, they bond together a lot better and it makes a much more firm surface. When the machine goes through, it's an incredibly cool looking, you know, very narrow corduroy, you know, mountain bike trail, single track through the woods. So imagine you're mountain biking and all around you is literally two to three or four feet of snow. So this isn't like, you know, Detroit where you might get three or four inches of snow and then the next day it melts and it's back to grass again. I mean, this is like Alaska stuff. This is like constant, but the groomer and the snowmobile is packing down essentially in the same spot. So it's kind of a very magical thing that it can be groomed enough to actually ride a bicycle through the you know snow in the middle of winter. It's surreal. Did Marquette invent the snow bike single track? I'm, I'm really not sure. I'm not sure if anybody can actually make a claim to that. Over, over time, you don't know what people are doing out in the back woods, you know. The smoke doesn't mean I made the fire on my head, fire in my throat doesn't mean I made the fire. So the progression of our sport, the future of our sport, as far as like I'm concerned or we're concerned in the Marquette area, I think you're gonna start seeing a little bit more of a jump into the, the free ride aspect of the sport. Kind of a more aggressive aspect to the sport coming soon.